Want to find out what survives when a mini drac tries surfing? Me too, so let's find out. Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So you may have seen in my previous video about this mini Drax maiden. It didn't quite go to plan. You may have seen the photos at the end of the ESC. Well, this is where it buried itself. It's okay, I've got a nice 100 amp one that will cover that hole over. So that will be going in. But yeah, it seemed to burn out the ESC and the battery voltage drop way too low um at about the same time so it decided to glide down which it did very nicely i must say and just surf in the sea until it decided to come to shore again so that's what's happened to this plane before i go any further i'd just like to thank everyone who's subscribed i've just hit a milestone of 500 subscribers don't worry i'm not going to keep doing these updates i just really wanted to thank you guys if you're not a subscriber please consider it because it gets the videos out further and potentially can help more people maybe not this one in particular because i hope you guys don't end up with your plane in the sea but the technical stuff it might really help someone who's new to the hobby or just has a question so any thumbs up if you appreciate the video um and any subscriptions i really appreciate because at the end of the day we're just here to share with everyone else in the hobby and get people flying and having fun but back to this video so the motor itself seems fine, there's no binding, but I've not actually tried it yet, so that's an unknown. When this came out of the sea, it was washed through with fresh water, so it's had the best chance possible. And then some of the components, when I got home, I took out, cleaned off with IPA. So hopefully it's good news. But if not, the actual airframe is completely intact there's nothing wrong with the airframe whatsoever so it'll just be components and this will be flying again before it happened it was flying absolutely beautifully amazing plane so right of course the first thing i'll try is the servos so let's give it a go there we go one down <laughs> happy darren And there's number two. Awesome. Right. So everything on the airframe, apart from the motor, which I've not yet tested, is working. Yay. Happy. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to test the motor because I don't have an ESC at the moment. But to be honest, I want to put this motor on a different plane and I'm going to get a more efficient one. This, this is a 2814, which is the right size, but it's a 2350 kV. It's it's quite a quick motor so i've got another mini drac airframe that i'm going to put that on i'm literally just going to stick a receiver in it and just fly it for three minute balls out this one i want to try and get up in the air a bit longer so i'm going to get a more efficient motor for it so if this works or not it it's for this plane it's not overly important the only other thing i actually haven't tested is the beck so what i can do is that's the output from the back so if i put that as the input from the servo tester and i can use this is just output i've got a wall wart that's 12 volt dc so this is just outputting 12 volt as if it's a 3s pack so if i plug that in it's either going to smoke or it's going to light it up and be fine there we go so beck is absolutely fine Everything in the airframe tested, apart from the motor. So let's move on to the other stuff. So I thought before we get onto the other stuff, just in case you haven't seen that video or my post on Instagram, this is what's happened to the ESC. So that I cut off, but you can see there's a line here. It was embedded, all this, in the foam. So... I, once I've shown it on here, I'm going straight in the bin because it absolutely stinks still. What we can have a look at in the end and show it is that this cable here should be over here somewhere. It's actually melted and joined over this side. And if I pop the heat, heat sink off, you can see it's not pretty under there. It's totally knackered. This, bearing in mind, is a 60 amp ESC. 
it's not a little ESC by, by any means of your imagination. But it's now a dead ESC, so it's going in the bin. So it will be replaced with that motor with a 100 amp ESC. And we'll get some fun out of that. It was cruising nicely at 100 miles an hour, so yeah, that part was brilliant. So now on to the main event, so to speak. This is the main components inside the plane. Now, everything here, I I took out the day I got back, gave it a clean out with IPA and left it to dry. It's been, well, it happened last Saturday. It's now Saturday again. So this has had pretty much a week to dry after cleaning with IPA. The only parts I didn't take out was the VTX and the camera. So we'll... We'll check those out and see what happens with those. First things first is this. This is an Eagle Tree Vector and it would be handy if it works because then I can pull logs off. But And it, it saves myself a hundred pounds plus buying a replacement used. But I put down here the Eagle Tree software and it's currently in offline mode. So if it connects, hopefully we'll see LEDs light up and the, the software change. So let's give it a go. Ah, that's looking promising. And yep, you can see we've got no signal, but that's fair enough. We've got not got a receiver hooked up, but it's actually working. Gyro is working. Awesome. So from this perspective, it looks like the vector is working. So I'm happy bunny. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the power. And now the only way we can really test the rest of it is by plugging it in. So what I'm going to do is just hook up the bus. I need the lid to remember what it is. This is the actual lid from it. You can see it's still got salt water marks on the lid. But that is the bus there. I've got all the boxes for this. Obviously, it's all just stripped apart to clean. Same with all the hatches on the uh, mini drag. You saw it without any hatches on, but I've got all the hatches. The actual screw parts broke, but um, I can't comment on the genuine because they're actually orange ones that I printed to match the rest of the vinyl. So, all right, let's plug this back in and see what happens. So, the vector itself is fine. Ah, there's blinking GPS light, so that's looking good. There's nothing on the airspeed sensor, but I don't believe there is anyway. But it must be passing the um, the bus through. So maybe it's working. So no, I don't think there's any way of actually telling if this is working properly without getting an OSD online. But it's looking good. Good enough that I'm going to put it all back together at some point soon. So the only other thing left to test is the power supply. So let's get back to the workbench. So once again, I'm going to use this, which again is just outputting 12 volt. So I'm going to use a smoke stopper. So th this is really useful. It's a soft view, so you won't actually blow anything. So let's just plug it in, see if we get any bangs. Which obviously we wouldn't because it's plugged into that, but that seems fine. Let's hook up the output. And we'll see if it will power the vector. So I'll, I'll take the bus out for now. We'll plug that in. And then let's see what happens. Perfect. Obviously, we've not tested uh, the, the other rails. But the vector itself is working. So again, I'm going to guess that it's all working fine. So thank you very much, Josh, for washing this all in fresh water. <laughs> I'm just I'm just amazed that it didn't actually stop working in the splashdown, but no, so far it all looks good. Right, so the next test is going to be this little fella here. This is a Crossfire Micro. All right, so here we have the lead for the. It looks like there might be a little bit of corrosion in the actual socket itself. But not too bad. Something in there I'm gonna get rid of. It just looks like a bit of fluff paper or something, probably left over because the, the label is actually stuck to this 
and to obviously clean it, I needed to wash the label off. So it's just a bit of bit of label that's gone on there. So we'll get that plugged in, and I've got a spare uh, antenna here, so we'll pop that on for a minute. So what I can also use again is my uh, Beck output. So what I'll do is I'll grab my crossfire module because we might as well make sure it binds. So let's get that there. We're not going to see much from it. It's just going to hopefully change color. So we've got our yellow at the moment. And what I'll do is I'll plug this in and hopefully it will turn. I think it's blue or green. I can't remember. Green. Perfect. We have our crossfire working. So at the moment, absolutely everything is working. Now it's just the components that I forgot to take out and clean. Last two things here are the VTX and the camera. Now this VTX <laughs> just looks like it pulls off. And actually it looks fine. There's no, I can't actually see any corrosion on it whatsoever. So even though it looks like it would be really easy for water to get in this, it's, it's you know, it's, it's really simple. There's just holes. There's nothing to stop that whatsoever. But it looks like the washing with fresh water has probably helped that because there's no corrosion in there at all. Obviously, I've not tested it. Um, I'll need the beck and everything in the mini drag. So maybe I'll pull that up at the end of the video. So there's a little bit of salt in there, but nothing really. But we'll try that. We'll try this in a bit. So now it's the camera. We can see a bit of fogging on the lens, which is nothing to worry about. So yeah, there's a bit of rust on that screw. But to be honest, if the only thing that's not working out of this is a VTX and a camera, I'll call that a massive win. So this is a Foxeer Predator, one of the originals. I got it for about 16 quid because the Predator Freeze had just been released at the time. But it's a brilliant camera. But I would probably, I mean, I've, I've actually got a spare uh, Rattel here so I could use that. Or to be honest, it's got, there's a, a new Foxeer out called the Razor, which Specs wise looked very similar to the, the original Predator. So I thought I'd try them. They're 13 pounds at Hobby RC. Maybe maybe 13 pounds and a few pence, but they are insanely cheap. And the only difference really is the plastic. This is a much tougher plastic. And the, the razor is a much cheaper plastic. But the picture, I've, I've not had a chance to fly it in between trees and stuff yet where the hdr would be beneficial so I, I haven't tested the wide dynamic range that sort of thing yet but as far as just regular flying and picture goes it's on par with this no problem whatsoever again i've not tested latency so i don't know maybe rc shim has a video for that he's really good for latency testing so let's have a look inside and see how this is so again it doesn't actually look too bad it looks like this could be sealed a lot better than the uh the vtx so yeah, there's not even any crap on the sensor yeah again i think that's going to be absolutely fine so what i do is i'll get all this back together i'm going to stick it in the mini drag and then we can test the camera and the vtx see what's happening so I'll be back shortly. Okay, so we're all back together. Uh, just to go over what I've done, GPS is in, it's not fixed. Uh, the um, Crossfire is in, it's on its proper antenna, which you can't see, but it's a uh, X-Fighter Pro. That's, if you imagine this is upright against the fin on the other side. So that is actually connected. I just need to put um, heat shrink over that when it all works fine. The airspeed sensor I've plugged in, but I've not connected the pipes because I'm thinking I might actually get like a syringe or something and just push some fresh water through it just to make sure that there's no blockages in the actual uh, pipe itself. The Again, this is plugged in. I've not actually hooked up a VRX at the moment, but if this 
we'll plug it in. If it all goes well, what I'll do is I'll hook up a VRX and put the output directly to the screen so we can all get to see that working. This is mainly just to make sure all the components are working together. I've got a 60 amp ESC literally just in so I can take uh, the power out to power the the castle back to power the crossfire. So what we have here, we've got a crossfire module that should go green, I think it was, if it all works. So nothing to do other than plug it in and see what happens. So stage one, let's plug it in. Okay, so there we go. We have our vector, that's working, crossfire's working. I can hear the servos chirping away, there we go movement on the servos okay so the battery was running low so i've just put it in the back it's not actually lit up a color but uh, it says it's running it's on 10 milliwatt and that makes me happy so that's on uh the stabilized mode got manual so this should be uh, 2d hold Let's turn the gain up and make sure that's all okay. Yeah, so the gain's up, surfaces are moving. So that looks like everything is working as it should on the vector, which is brilliant. We know the crossfire's working, the antenna's working. So all that's really left to check out. We don't know the motor's working. The connectors on this ESC are too small for the bullets on this motor. So that's why that's not hooked up. And it's only a 60 amp as well, so I don't want to melt it again. So the next thing to do, we'll get a video out from a video receiver and see if the video is working. Okay, so this is the last test. Do we actually have proper video? So let's plug in. There we go. So the VTX is working. But it looks like we have nothing from the camera. So the only casualty is the fox ear predator. But I take that as a massive win. You can see the top of the screen's going over. I'm pretty sure that is just my uh, the way I've got the video set up. It's only a cheap thing off of eBay. But yeah, I'm going to take that as a win. New camera in there. Sort the motor out and it will be in the air again. So that's awesome news for me. Uh, so it. Yeah, don't lose hope if you lose your model in the sea. Just get it out as soon as, wash it through with fresh water, give it a clean with IPA when you get home, and hopefully you have as good a luck as I've had. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to get alerts for new content. A lot of my stuff is sort of tutorials, so this is a, an odd video for me. Um, but yeah, please, please do those things and get the videos shared out so that other people can see them and learn from them too. And thank you guys. Fly your models like you stole them. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.